everyone. Uh, today I have a book for you called A Cooked Up Fairy Tale. And this is a fractured fairy tale book. That's when they take a fairy tale and give it a twist. So let's see what kind of twist we have today with this story. Although William lived in a magical land of fairy tales, he preferred pastries to princesses, kitchens to kingdoms, and recipes to the royal reporter. William dreamed of being a chef, a chef known throughout the land. Whether sauteed, sifted, basted, or baked, pureed, poached, filleted, or flaked, William's dishes were perfect. But cooking happily ever after was a different story. He tried working at the brick house. But the menu was too dangerous. Pot a wolf stew. Bring water to a boil. Stir in three cups of peas, three cups carrots, three cups potatoes, and one big bad wolf. You can see all the scratches there. He served up porridge at Three Bears Bistro. But the folks there were very persnickety. Too cold, too hot. And he'd bake for gingerbread on the go. That hadn't ended well either. William decided he'd better cook from home. But his pantry was almost bare. So he emptied the last few coins from his cookie jar and headed to the market. This truck leaves us a box. What's this? asked William. Fairy tale food must be splendid. To Judy, chief of fairy tale headquarters, must deliver before bedtime. But it was only raw apples, beans, and a pumpkin. This isn't splendid, said William. Clearly, Fairy Tale Headquarters needs a good chef to spice things up before the bedtime delivery. So he sliced and diced, chopped and topped, and stirred and whirred. Then he packed up his delectable creations and followed the signs to Fairy Tale Headquarters. Judy, I need the apples, and I need the beans. The pumpkin, Judy, the pumpkin. Where can that delivery be, asked Judy in a stew. I believe I can help, said William. May I present baked apples with a caramel drizzle, bean soup with smoked ham, and pumpkin pie with cream and candied pecans. Who? What? Why? stammered Judy. I need shiny apples and raw beans and a whole pumpkin. Don't you know anything about fairy tales? I'm sorry, said William. I read cookbooks, not fairy tales. But maybe I could you, you've cooked up enough trouble, said Judy. It's bedtime and the tales must begin. Now leave and take this book of fairy tales with you. William plopped down outside the kingdom wall and opened the book. Poisoned apple, beanstalk, pumpkin coach. Oh my, said William. Fairy tales really do have their own ingredients. He rushed back to find Judy. Did I spoil the apple story, he blurted out. Snow White? Actually, she loved your ba baked apples and ate every one. She was so stuffed that she fell into a deep sleep. Of course, this caused a stir with those seven dwarves. But then there was a passing prince and a kiss, so happily ever after. Thank goodness, said William. And the bean story? 
Jack and the Beanstalk? The giant said something like, Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell soup and I want me some. Jack was in a pickle, but he drove a hard bargain and traded the pot of soup for the giant's castle in the clouds. Another happily ever after. Such a relief, said William. What about the pumpkin tail? Cinderella, it's still unfolding. We'll find out together. Oh no, said William. This is a recipe for disaster. Then slip, flip, whack, smack. Scrumptious, said the prince. Simply delicious. He took another bite and said, I vow to search all the land until I find the baker of this pie. Cinderella slumped in her puddle of pumpkin. This isn't happily ever after, sighed Judy. Happily ever after, murmured William. He strode right into the fairy tale. Your Highness, I bake the pie, and I will bake pies for you ever after. But may I suggest you have your pie and your princess too? The prince gazed at Cinderella. You're a feast for my eyes, he said. Would you care to dance? My, my, said Judy. It looks like you've cooked up another happy ending. And from that night forward, the prince and his princess ate like kings and queens, and William cooked happily ever after. The end. And our song for today is the Grand Old Duke, Duke of York. It's a marching song, so you can stand up and march, and it goes like this. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Thanks for watching.